Let me to explain the process of, uh, technically or, or what is actually the concept of like technically I mean I just uh, draw the imagery with pencil after that I create some kind of an under painting and uh, except for the background I think for the background I just start with a yellow color because that, that helps helps uh, to bring the other colors to push them completely forward it's going to have a very uh, black background but the yellow is really going to help to push some of the other places to the front the same happens with the with a figure I'm going to use some uh, glaze, the first glazes that is going to push the last glazes completely come to the front my work has to do with uh, mental states and uh, the psychological space I think in that sense uh, what it's that emotional paint instead of what it's physically paint even that the imagery shows a lot of a uh, physically uh, physical uh, paint uh, I think what I'm trying to do is, is for me it's some kind of a symbolism it's not a physical paint that I'm trying to show but most but more what is um, the emotional emotional pain or the men mental pain Well, I don't, I don't have a preconceived notion of what the painting's gonna be like. I guess you could say I just, I allow myself to be affected by my surroundings. I usually just start sketching right on the board, and because my work is so process-driven, um, I, I think all the information that invariably ends up getting layered on becomes important. Like lines from this underpainting perhaps will show through in the finished painting and so maybe it won't be this whole foot anymore but maybe it'll be a part of the toe that's you know in contrast to some new type of image that ew. I like to take away information more than I like to add it I think and um, I do a lot of children that's what a lot of my work is right now so I don't necessarily put the children in realistic backgrounds, so to speak. They're more in backgrounds of um, texture and color. I've been working, I think this multi-panel framework is try to do like one panel paintings, but it just doesn't work for me. So that it's time to either kind of break it down, sand it off, sand it off or like change the panels up. And it makes me see differently. It's like allows different ways of seeing. If the audience walking around on the floor, Hamaguri floor, Hamaguri powder put on put on the shoes and so it is film so and he and she audience uh, will bring it back to their home i found the chili powder in here this is a hung hungarian a very popular cultural thing food it is the, the same thing I, I make the same same room same space and the um, audience choose this. If audience choose this, audience um, bring their homes, their culture. Black one is pure, um, pure Japanese charcoal, 
and the charcoal uses uh, ch charcoal is, is, is very popular thing from ancient from ja from ancient Japanese. Uh, charcoal is um, charcoal has a, a infinity holes, so charcoal make uh, air clean. It's also the popular Japanese culture. So we'd like to make uh, white and black space, and um, the audience should audience should choose uh, which 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 um, which space do you want to around go walking around and walking around and the so and taking. Our, our culture to their home. Interested in topographical maps and uh, you know when you look out the side of an airplane window what the landscape looks like that you're flying over and I'm interested in things that have that phenomenological uh, idea that it seems like something you've seen or someplace you've been but isn't really you know, but so that it's imaginary suggestive of the real estate To me, I, I like to uh, react to what I see um, around me. I notice that many artists are very inward directed and look very much at themselves. And I'm, in terms of, I love nature, and so I, I like to react to the nature that surrounds me. Um, I think I have sort of a special feeling, communion, uh, with that, and so that's what I enjoy. I love color. Um, I love bright light, and so part of part of what I'm reacting when I paint is to that quality of, of the light. Um, I love things that that I consider to be beautiful, and and I find all of all of nature and creation very beautiful, um, even when it's. You know, cities that are falling apart and ruins, that can be very beautiful too. I'm thinking of it as my creation series, um, where I'm using, you know, sort of, sort of like the Big Bang imagery, you know, and, um, and some words from the Bible, which says in the beginning was the words, and I'm putting it in Spanish and in English both, and then just sort of trying to create a design with the words. And the um, and the paint. Uh, I usually sort of start off by saying that I use a camera, but I don't sort of consider myself a photographer because I didn't really uh, know exactly what what I was sort of getting into or going to be doing when I when I started in art or photography. Um, basically, um, um, you know, I sort of look through the camera lens and, you know, wherever I am, not looking for specific places, concrete sort of objects that are recognizable, but more or less um, making images that somehow explore questions and uh, uh, feelings moods, um, you know, not, not exactly trying to sort of answer those questions. Often the pictures are sort of spare or minimal, not, you know, just sort of not a lot going on there, and that's sort of related to the whole 
sort of absence and presence. It's not specifically related to Hungary, you know, it's not sort of about Hungary or, um, or you know, this town we're in. Um, I suppose there's maybe some of the feelings about, uh, you know, maybe I'm having while I'm here are certainly part of it. Um, I just look for, you know, places and maybe some sort of scene that somehow, that I feel somehow I can use in a picture to evoke a certain feeling. Or when a viewer um, is looking at the work, I would hope that he or she feels something or questions something or wonders something um, rather than, you know, sort of say like, you know, oh, you know, I'm... I know that place and Well, I think it's a combination of portraiture with narrative. I, um, I've always been really attracted to um, portraiture, which is a genre that's really existed over centuries, and I think it reached its high point in the 1400s. And there is something different involved, the historic kind of idea of capturing and idealizing someone's persona to make a lasting positive impact, which you frequently get with um, dealing with, you know, the collaboration between an artist and, and the, com the commissioner. It takes on more of, I think, a narrative feeling when the viewer looks at it. Because I don't believe that it's important for the viewer to know who the characters are. But the characters themselves are important in the, the actual creation of the work. So they're important for me, but not for the viewer so much, which is why, where that divergence comes of the difference between, I think, an actual kind of the definition of portrait and in the idea of a contemporary narrative. I'm really interested in how people take on different personas in public um, in front of other people and how sometimes they let down their guard when they're unaware of being watched. That there's a lot that goes on in people's lives that they, that goes on in the inner workings of their mind and they don't necessarily want to share that with the rest of the world. Um, and so over time, I'm really interested in kind of that, that idea of, of the hidden life and the, the idea of capturing a, and breaking through the persona that someone projects to the outside world um, and how it differs from the reality of someone's psychological character and what they're really about, about kind of an attempt to capture a scene, but at the same time leave it ambiguous enough so that a viewer can create meaning wherever they see fit and that they can fit their own lives and their own experiences in the work. I am working on um, a one-woman show, multi-characters, that's the story of the First Lady of the United States launching a sex boycott to fight global warming. And it's inspired by a 2,500-year-old ancient Greek comedy called Lysistrata, in which a group of women get together and all the women of Greece uh, to deny sex to their husbands to stop the Peloponnesian War. And this play has been the theme of my life for the last three years or so. Mm -hmm. And so I, uh, I received a grant from the theater in Burlington, space grant, where I got 60 hours of studio time towards the first round of development. And I presented the first work in progress show right before I left to come to Hungary. And so I have been attempting through the heat to try to keep, uh, keep generating material and refining the script. I'm scheduled to do another performance in January, though I'm hoping that there's going to be opportunities throughout the course of the fall to keep presenting material.
because it's much easier. Well, it's much easier when I have a deadline, and it's also much easier uh, putting stuff up in front of an audience because it's you know it's it's much easier to know how comedy plays out when you're when you're uh, in front of people than when you're in a converted blind cellar. <laughs> These are a new series that I'm doing based on um, things that are created by humans. The last series was about um, things that are impacted by humans, uh, the environment, uh, water, uh, particularly. But these are um, surfaces that are, are created by humans. So this is a uh, bar relief section of it. And then the study I'm doing is um, seeing how it fits inside the square. And uh, once I figure that out, then I, uh, I'll probably change some of the figures in to create a, uh, a dichotomy rather than just having a straightforward rendering of a, a section of it.